Okay, so um, we've got this heat exchanger, Worcester Bosch heat exchanger apart, uh, and we can see what it's like inside. There we go. Now, here's how it works. It comes in right here, and it circulates around like so. So it comes right round, and then as you see, it drops under here, comes into the wider channel, and comes down and around. So what it's doing is it's spiralling down. Now I'm actually looking at this one and I'm not sure why it got taken out. You see here we can actually see some sort of pitting and corrosion or something going on here. But that won't have affected um, that won't have affected the uh, the operation of the boiler. Um, we can see a bit of a it's getting quite hot in here we can see that but that's to be expected because that's probably about the hottest place it's going to be um, down in there that's where the first fingers um, actually connect uh, where the first fingers of the heat exchanger come across so you expect a bit of a burn in there you know um, but nothing no, none of that's obstructing but you can see this right here where that piece of tube comes in is the worst possible place um, you know to, to get blocked up right there and that's where you're looking to clear uh, other than that I mean the rest of it's all quite wide uh, it's all quite open and then you'll see here I mean right down the bottom there anything that tries to choke that will just go flying out and into the pipe below um, so it's unlikely that it's going to get choked there there's plenty of room but you can see there's definitely some pitting going on um, and that's all over the place but I can't see why that would have affected um, I can't see why that would have affected the um, the operation of the boiler there's still integrity between each one of these uh, sections so it's not going to try and circulate the wrong way um, yeah very strange um, again on this side I mean you know here's where I chopped it open um, there's no real evidence of any particular issue with this heat exchanger. So um, there's someone who spent 600 quid down the drain, and I'm glad it wasn't me. Um, so there we are. But you can see now from this where your problem's going to be. You can see how easy it would be once you've cleared that bit there. Because as you know, the, 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 you know, as soon as something comes, as soon as you've... Um, got the muck out into a wider channel it's gonna flow once you've got it down from here there's very little chance of it getting stuck again so you can blow it down and round and out the bottom of the boiler or out the bottom there so it would certainly be worth in a bad case if you're trying to you know keep your keep your costs to a minimum putting a hose pipe on here because you can obviously you've got that nice little connection at the top there you can get something on that inch hose around that blast it through the other way but in saying that X800 um, is a good way to go and I do wonder I mean I must admit I do wonder um, we have used this you know we do use this stuff and leave it in for quite a while I'm wondering if that's what this damage is here um, I don't know the history of this heat exchanger so I have no idea but um, <clears throat> and this here I'm not this doesn't really surprise me this isn't you know there's no depth to that at all it's just you know it's just starting to bake a bit of scale on there but there's nothing real there um, certainly nothing that would obstruct um, so there we are um, it does suggest though that it is possible that X800 is affecting that there um, it may also be cavitation um, or it may be um, it may be scale uh, sorry it may be bad casting but that's an awful lot to be bad casting because um, it continues all around there. So there we are. Um, scratch my previous statement. Use X800 for a week. Um, that will do it. Um, I've, uh, I've never actually failed with that on one of these. So there we are, guys. I hope that helps. Cheers for now.